Okay, yes. You. So we're, um, you know, we've been running um, a couple of chats the last few weeks. And uh, for the last few weeks, we've been really focusing on mental emotional wellness for children. And we're going to continue with this theme until end of the month. So this week, nice. we are focused on relationships. And I'm really excited to have Chizia to share with us today. Um, you know, there's a lot about how parents' relationship, like couple relationships really affect the kids. Um, one of the studies mm. I saw actually said that um, when parents are stressed, so are their kids. And the kids can feel it, even if you're not bickering in front yeah. of them. They actually feel the vibe of the parents not you know, uh, having a positive relationship. And uh, one of the studies yes. said that because the child felt responsible for the parents' unhappiness, they actually ended mm -hmm. up doing badly in school. So there's a lot of um, influences and, and effects of this. So uh, what better person than she's here to share with us today? So let me introduce right. our speaker for our hearty chats where we get experts and uh, moms who you know share from their heart about what matters for all of us. And so Shizia is a parent coach. Welcome again, Shizia. Uh, Thank she you. Is, Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> she's the founder of East Meets West Parenting, uh, where she integrates parenting from the best of both worlds, East and West, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And she has yes. delivered countless parenting talks and workshops to many schools and organizations for uh, over hundreds of parents and equipping them with effective skills to communicate, connect, and strengthen family, family relationships. So today, Chizia is going to share with us about, you know, how uh, relationships between the couple uh, affects parenting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nice to have you again, Chizia. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, it's, it's great to be here and I uh, love talking about couples as well. Usually, I talk about couple uh, topics with my husband, uh, but since it's a short topic and he's actually uh, involved in another session with couples right now. So, I'll share a little bit about what we do with couples as well. Yeah, I love uh, to hear that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, you know, when, when Sophie came in, uh, uh, you know, as whether well, I, I could speak on the topic, you know, how the couple relationship affect parenting. Um, you know, it's sometimes, like you said, Sophie, like sometimes when, when couples fight, well, mom and dad fight, uh, they think that the kids don't know, right? Mm. They think that the kids don't know, uh, but the kids know, they pick up everything. So even during the parenting workshop, I, I sometimes would, would start the session off by saying, you know, um, the best gift that you, we can give our kids is actually a stable marriage or uh, yeah. the best gift that we can give our kids is actually to love your spouse right um, and I start with that because by by nature innately when kids are born um, you, you see humans are very unique hum, human babies are the only species uh, mm -hmm. that cannot be independent when oh, they're born okay right so if you look at all other hum, animal species they, they're all the survival depends on them being independent. That's true. Oh. As a human. Mm. Right? Uh, so so they, the first few hours when they get it, they have to walk, they have to run, they have to learn to, to hang. Otherwise, they, they, they would die. They wouldn't yeah. survive. Uh, mom's role, parents' role may be to support, but in essence, they, they need to learn the sentences for, for themselves. Mm. Uh, but the, the survival of the baby is entirely dependent on, on the family. And how dependent on the main caregiver. And the family unit is such that the survival of the family depends on mom and dad getting along. Right? Oh. Otherwise, the family unit will, will get affected. Yes. Right? Um, so I, I believe that we are all born with that innate um, instinct to, to want mom and dad to get along, uh, to want mom and dad to be well, so that um, you know, it's, it's, like a life, it's like a life and death kind of situation. Right. Um, so, so to me, it's, it's really a survival thing. And, and uh, you know, you, really, you mentioned, I have worked with a lot of um, couples who are going through divorce. Um, and, or sometimes when the wife uh, found out the husband are ha having marital affairs or vice versa, um, they always say that we, work, we try not to get kids involved, try not to get kids involved. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not possible not to have kids involved because they know. They know, and, and as we get a chance to talk to the kids, uh, we even, even have a program where we work with courts where the parents are going through divorce, um, and we, we work with the kids, yeah, so that the parents learn how to co-parent, or the parents learn how to minimize the impact on the kids, right? So, yes. so we, we, hear, we hear a lot of stories where kids like, did I do something wrong? If I had done better, if I behaved better, maybe mom and dad wouldn't split. 
Mm. Yeah, so there is actually a lot of self-blame uh, and the kids take it within, uh, upon themselves for the wellness of the parents. Mm. And I think it, it is not our kids' job to make sure that we are healthy. It, it is our job to make sure we're well. Um, and sometimes parents would, would get the kids to take sides. Right? Mm. When they fight, it's like, go talk to your mom, go to your dad, you know, go to, it, it, and, then they, and then the kids get caught in between. Um, and then they have this loyalty issue. And then it's like, should, should I tell mom? Should I tell that? And then, and then again, this creates a lot of anxieties for them. Mm. Well, right? It's also um, very confusing for them, I think. It, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, you know, should I tell mom this? And should I tell dad that? Um, and I even have, have uh, parents, and of, more often than not, it's mom, who actually, you know, share all their grievances with the kids, right? About their, their anxieties, their anger, you know, how horrible the husband... It's, it's like it, it, it's, it's crossing the emotional boundaries, mm. right? That it, these are not our kids' job to bear, right? Uh, but when, when we don't manage the couple relationship well, it actually really affects how our, our, our child develops, right? And mm. as a child is anxious, they get into the fight or flight mode. And, and when the brain gets into that mode, obviously they can't learn well, mm. right? Uh, or they're not able to have that emotional safety. Yes. Uh, to be able to actually l learn well, yeah. So, so yes, it, it, it has a very direct impact. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that couples or mom and dad cannot fight. It's just uh, we need to fight in a way that we also demonstrate to our kids how to resolve conflicts, right? Yes. Mm. Um, yeah. Because they're always and, learning. They're always observing. <laughs> so we are the role models. <laughs> yeah, and there's a saying that kids are great observers, but they're horrible interpreters. Ah, right. Mm -hmm. So they make meaning out of what they see. Yes. Right. So if their experience of marriage is like that, that may then form the impression of how marriage looks like, mm -hmm. which then will, may affect their future relationship with their spouse or how they how they see marriage will play out. Yes. True. Right? Um, yeah. So 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 yes yes it does and and with, with with working moms here I think I think it's it's a little bit like when you go into the office the mood of the office depends on whether or not your bosses are in. <laughs> like when okay. your bosses are around it's like and, and especially if you know your bosses are not getting along well and they're in the same space mm. you, you pick it up you sort of know right uh, even, even as an as, as, as employee so I think more so at home uh, that impact on the child uh, mm. yes yeah so it, no, it has actually many, la many layers of uh, implications mm. yeah that's really mm. true I mean I work with a couple of clients who had you know issues with their parents you know parents divorce or mm. well not exactly but yeah. sometimes it's just the way the parents parent and that really impacts mm. how they are as an adult um, how they yeah. view themselves some of them have self-worth yeah. issues or oh, you know responsibility yeah. issues it all stems yeah. from you know the, what happens in childhood and parents have a great influence on that um, you know, I've also yeah. read that uh, well a lot of people a lot of articles and, and research point to parental relationships actually declining as kids come along. Um, mm. So what, what, how can you know, couples parent effectively without neglecting <laughs> their own relationships? What a great question. Yes, re research is such that marital satisfaction is higher. Mm. Actually, it's pretty high, right? And then it dips, uh, it dips a little bit for three years. And then when kids come, it really dips. <laughs> then it hits a low... <laughs> It hits the lowest point when the kids are in teenage years, okay? and, and as the kids um, grow up and then it, it begins to go up a little bit. Mm. Uh, interestingly, I think just a few years back, um, there, there was a study that, that looked at which, uh, which stage that people tend to get divorced. Are you going to take a guess? <laughs> at which years mm -hmm. that people tend to, yeah, there are two groups. Okay. Take a guess which other. Is that one yeah, of the seven year each or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call, right? Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, it's actually not. Surprisingly, it's actually the first three years. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay, first three years. Um, so I, I think divorce is, is kind of becoming easier nowadays. So when things are not working out, uh, I think people tend to exit earlier. So first three mm. years, adjustment period. Okay. Right? They can't, when they can't cross the hurdle of, you know, you drive me nuts, you know, you weren't like this before you got married, right? Yeah, better um, cut the suffering. Then, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, like you know, um, and the next group is when they've been married for more than 25 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And take a guess why. 
one of the reasons. So kids are grown up, don't need them anymore. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, is that really? Kind of, yeah, wow. yeah. That's that's one of the reasons. Like, and, and very often it's initiated by the women. Mm. It's like I stuck in there. Ready, go, Joe. It's time to go, right? Mm. Um, so so we and and they always felt like they stay in the family for the kids. But but as they were splitting, the kids knew all along that they were having problems. Right, um, and and the, the the kids kind of saw how how they kind of like pull through it, um, you, you know. So so it does have a huge impact, and and if we don't go through that phase, uh, as as you mentioned, how how do we build relationship during mm. those these these uh, child rearing years? Um, it either go deep lower, or it just kind of like gets a little bit better, and then things are just like that, you know, or it could get better. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, but hopefully we don't wait until the kids grow up. Then we start to build less. Uh, then it would be quite a painful thing for the next twenty five years. Mm -hmm. right right. Um, so, so how to build? I, I think the the first principle uh, I really want to kind of share is your your couple relationship uh, should always be the priority. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. As much as kids are important and they do have priorities, they do have needs. Uh, but when it comes to couple relationship, that should take precedent and that should be the priority, right? Meaning uh, we may not be able to spend as much time with our spouse, but that has to be scheduled into our our interaction, right? Um, and the, the the funniest thing is sometimes when we talk about couple relationship, I have husbands that tell me, she said, it's very weird, but it's really hard for me to tell my wife that I'm jealous of my kids. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, because the minute the kids come, like he became a dad and he he became functional. Mm. Right. Uh, and it's sometimes, a very common thing. Yeah. Ah, uh, sometimes the wife doesn't even allow the the, the husband to help. Mm. Right, because he doesn't do it her way. Right, and and that begins just that that gap that distance and it just builds and builds. Right, and then you know so so he begins to pull away, focus on on work, and then. And then she begins more focused on, on family. Um, and then the dynamics sort of begin to happen. You know, uh, she can get, gets really attached to the kids. Mm. Right? And he feels jealous, but he can't say anything. So, so it just kind of like spirals right, over time. And, and, yeah. Then it, and, and, yeah, and then the distance, just, the gap just becomes bigger and bigger. Right? Mm. Right? Mm. So, so always be very intentional that yes. our spouse, uh, cont we, we are continuing uh, that couple relationship. And yeah. the children is an extension of our couple relationship. Mm. Right? So the children should totally always be seen, yeah, as an extension, not the core of the family. Mm. Right? Um, so, so I think if we start from that perspective, it makes it a little bit easier uh, for us to, to be intentional in taking care of the couple relationship. Yes. Right? And I think, I think most of us know what to do. Uh, you know, the dating thing, you know, uh, regularly have fun, talk. Uh, we just don't do them. Uh, or we become very functional, very operational. Like really, like what do you talk to your husband about? Mm. Kids, <laughs> you know? I or, think it's really or, priority. <laughs> and I yeah. find that, I mean, from my own yeah. experience, uh, mm. you know, when I, there was a stage where I really, you know, prioritized my child, uh, my children, mm. uh, because mm. one of them was really ill. And so I was okay. the main caregiver because, you know, my, my husband had to work. He can't take leave that much. So because mm. my energy was all focused on that one child, I, I did notice yeah. that not only did I, you know, uh, seem to drift away from him, but I think I also drifted mm. away from my older child because you're just, you mm. know, so focused there. Uh, yes. But uh, yes. thankfully, you know, I kind of woke up <laughs> from that. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah, uh, yeah I, I found that when we, when, yeah, when, when I, allowed him or I encouraged him to become part of that whole thing. It's not like me just looking after one child. I mean, he has a role too. But as you said, sometimes mm -hmm. moms are just so protective or they just think that, oh, just because the other one isn't, doesn't meet the expectations of you know, parenting mm -hmm. or doing certain tasks, you kind of just say, I'll do everything. Um, yeah. But I think whether it's perfect yeah. or not perfect, uh, the partner mm -hmm. has to be involved. The spouse has to be involved. Uh, and then yeah. it's really a parent, parent together right, as a couple. Yes, and then yes, um, prioritizing the, the spouse over the children is very important as well. And I think that's what brought us really back together uh, to where we are yeah. today again. Yeah, so I yes, totally agree yeah, with you. Yeah, I yeah, experienced yeah. that myself. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yes. And, and you find that when, when the couple relation, I, I, I'm not sure if that happens because that sort of happened to us a little bit in a part of our marriage. Because that happened, marriage counselor also, also happened when, because you just get, get sucked into the routine, right? Mm. Uh, but it, it just feels that, especially, I think for both men and women, when the marriage unit is stable, we are generally more stable emotionally. Yes. And that has a direct impact on how we parent our kids. Mm. You know, it, 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 like, it goes like that. But if you just have a strong relationship with your kid, it doesn't necessarily contribute to a better relationship with the husband. Mm. But when you have a strong relationship with your partner, it almost always will contribute to a better parenting with your kid. Mm, I like that. I like that. Right? It, it's, so, 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 so sometimes I tell mom, okay, like, if you don't like your spouse that much, then do it for your kids, say, <laughs> you know, if you love your kid, yeah, at least, like, find some reason to work, work with your partner so that, so that it is, it is partnership. Yeah. You, you know, actually, I, that reminded me of uh, the post that you, you did, I think, just yesterday. Or huh? come, it is about how moms take on oh, that yes. responsibility. Yeah. I think that sort of contributes to part of that as well, mm, in terms mm. of the partnership. Yes. Yeah. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that was that was very yeah. Good to... So that was yeah. uh, uh, an event yeah. that I attended, and uh, it just yeah. came up that uh, moms tended to um, take a lot of responsibilities on themselves in terms mm. of parenting mm. um, the child's education. They think they need to take care of the entire household, how it's yeah. run. So it's always about yeah. you know everything I have to do, uh, but they forget that yeah. um, you know they can delegate things in the household. Mm. It doesn't have yes. to be them planning for meals all the time. Uh, yes. they yes. can empower the children to be independent instead of them having mm. to sit next to the child and you know until they finish their homework, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know some kids need some extra attention, <laughs> but we can still you know teach. <laughs> we them. can still train them. Yes. Yeah, yes. Train them, right? <laughs> trainable. Trainable. Yes. Yeah. And definitely, I think um, dads were saying dads in the group were saying that you know they mm. they are looking at their role in the family beyond just being mm. bringing home the bacon. You know, they also yeah. want to be part of the parenting. So I think moms yeah. need to acknowledge and give them that space. And actually in our group, yeah. we have some very hands-on dads as well. So it was really nice oh, to hear cool. some of the refreshing opinions. I think in that post, there were, you know, two, two dads who, who shared. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's re- always, I suppose, a work in progress to learn how to work together as partners. Exactly. In yes. this, yeah, in this parenting journey. Yeah, we're right, all learning we every day. Yeah, every, no, that is, that's kind of like the most frustrating or the most exciting thing about parenting is by the time you thought you figured them out, they move on to the next phase. Oh, yes. Like, it changes from you know, toddler like, to it, school it's going like, to teens. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, teens. My gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a whole different story. Yeah. When teens, I have got two girls, teens, so like when they both act out at the same time, it like, drives me nuts. Oh, wow. Okay. I haven't reached <laughs> there. I only had one teen. <laughs> yeah, if they take turns, that's not too bad. But you have two. <laughs> yeah, mm. being, being moved on the same day, I was like, oh my. Oh, yes. We need to breathe a lot. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. And then, uh, and then just let them work it out. Yeah. Is there yeah. a question for you? So we're talking about, you know, we, if the couple is, has a good relationship, it helps a lot with the parenting with the kids. But what if the couple have different... Um, you know, mm. different idea about how, you know, the kids should be parent. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, maybe you can also touch upon, you know, um, those who are, the kids who are being co-parented. So there might be very different parenting styles. So how do we approach this sort of different parenting styles? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think the differences is a good thing to begin with. Mm. Uh, because I would not want my husband to be exactly like me. Uh, because then my kids would just have one parent. Uh, so with two parenting styles, then it actually exposes my kids to different ways of doing things, different experiences, right? Uh, simple things like putting the kid to sleep, I would do it one way, he would do it another way, right? And there is not a right and wrong way. Um, so the, the general principle that I'll, I operate out of is, uh, number one is, what is in the kid's best interest? Right, mm. so we always start from that. The starting point is what are we trying to achieve here when we when we talking about approaches, right? Is it Western medicine, Chinese medicine, like you know whatever it is? We're still looking at what's in the best interest for the child, Nothing. what works best for the child, right? Mm. Uh, starting from there, right? Um, and and sometimes it's not about wrong. It's just about what fits better for that particular time, mm. right? Uh, so how can we work that out? 
then uh, the other thing is I find that it's really important is how can we play to strength? Um, because we really come with different strengths. And as I mentioned, with different strengths, you draw out different things from your kids. Uh, you see how your spouse interact with your kids. It's like, oh, how did you do that? And then like, it never happened with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so so it, it, it's just wonderful. And, and once you know your strength, um, then it is easier for us to then support each other. Mm. Right? So instead of trying to fight what's the wrong, right way, wrong way, it's just great. If this is your strength and this is where you're strong at, when you are managing the kids at this space, I will fully support you. Mm. Right? It, so I, I don't think that we need to necessarily, uh, necessarily see that this is the best way. Uh, we can definitely support once we decide that this is the way to do it. Mm. Right. Oh. Um, so, so the, the last thing we want to do is like, you know, okay, like, you think, you think it's better than you go do it. Like. And, and then like, you ask me, go do it. And then every time I do something, you go, nye, nye, nye. It's, it, again, it goes back to the couple relationship, then affecting the child. Mm. Right. Um, mm. So really you sit down and like, look at what, what are the areas you're strong at? Like for, for my husband and I, um, I'm, I'm a lot more relational. So I handle the kids mm. in terms of when they, when they emotionally, they tend to talk to me more. Uh, they tend to connect with me more. Um, so because my husband is less conversational, I also have to be very intentional in including him in, into the conversation. Mm. Right? So I don't leave him out. So even though this is sort of agreed upon my space, I also want to as much as possible to include him. Right? Uh, his strength is when there is an issue, go to dad. <laughs> because dad is like in the head, you need, you need solution, go to dad. But you know, before you go to dad, if you've got emotions, talk to me first. Then go to dad. <laughs> okay? But don't go to dad, expect that you are going to be supported emotionally. That's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's a yeah, good so, so that, challenge. Yeah, so the kids sort of learn along the way. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, and sometimes we would talk together with like, you know, me, dad, and the kid would talk together. Um, so, so, so I think because each person is so different in terms of our approach. Um, again, you back to when your couple relationship is strong, when you know that you're doing this for the best of your child, then you will work things out. You yeah. will make it work. Right, and I think the important thing is not to take shortcuts. Sometimes, what is efficient may not be what's more most effective in the long run. Mm. Right, what is efficient is I manage it now the best, the easiest way. You know, I do it my way without my partner, but it mm. may not be most effective in the long run because then kids learn. Oh, I get this with mom. I get this with dad. Maybe you know I can do something with mom and dad, um, or that may then end up also affecting the couple relationship. So efficient, yes, get things done but is it effective in the long run, which is another question that sometimes I ask but when it mm. comes to the different, yeah. Yes. Um, oh. Yeah. I, I, I really yeah, like what you said. Yeah. 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 So, so it's just, just some guiding principles because each family is so different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're saying mm. always look at the best interests of the child. I really like that, what you're saying about yeah, that because, you know, my, my, my husband and I do have very different parenting styles. Although we are, mm. you know, getting closer, we're kind of merging. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like what you said you know yeah. uh, actually it's good to be different but I think yes. through the years we learn we found out what works and what doesn't work sometimes he, you know yeah. his method is better than mine and then we just find that yes. balance along the way uh, but always yes. about the best interest for the child and uh, sometimes yeah. I just have to you know although I may not agree with his action there and then at that mm. moment mm. Uh, but I mm. just have to let him do it I mean you know because yeah. I can't you know I would like the child to know that this is your father and you have to respect his choice mm-hmm. of action towards how you should behave or how you should be, uh, you know, yes. um, uh, to be learning uh, as a child. Yes. Uh, so yes. I let him take over. Uh, and yes. I think, uh, yeah, there's always a moment where he's right. And then, you know, I think now we're yeah. closer in our parenting style. So we're uh, learning along yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> kind of mer- merging. Merging. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Merging. Yeah. I, I love what you, you yeah. Yeah, yeah, it went on okay. Yeah, I, I love what you say about how uh, that moment um, where where you, you you sort of take a step back, uh, but that because you needed the kid to respect the dad, mm. right? So so at that moment, the teaching, the, what's more important to teach the the child at the moment is like to do things my way, or that the child needs to learn to respect the father, mm. right? And and that to me is a more important lesson. Ah, yes. for, for me to yeah so because every moment is a teachable moment exactly yes right so it's, it's sometimes you can't have the whole back it's like what what is it that i need my child to get at this in, in this incident right even if i don't agree 
right? mm. it's not it's not wrong it's just okay this, this is your dad you respect this, that that's yeah. that's the way yeah yes yeah i love that yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh thank you <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Do you have some uh, tips for, you know, co-parenting if, you know, the child is uh, going ah, to co-parent? Okay, yes. Um, in terms of co-parenting, the biggest challenge um, I hear uh, from parents is go to my ex, come back a different child. Okay, uh, because different rules, uh, different, different contexts, different, even more different styles. Okay, again, I can only set down principles to, to run by. Okay, never, ever, ever two things. One is to, to, to um, pass, pass information to your ex-partner, to your kid. Mm. Okay, if you've got something to say to your ex-partner, do it yourself. Okay, your child is not your messenger. Okay, um, and the reason is that the, the, the child does not need to be caught in between your conflict. So learn to deal with that yourself. Okay, uh, if you can't, there may be a third person who is an adult who can, who can mediate for you, but not the child, because the child will then take on the anxieties for both sides, mm -hmm. right? Um, then they will, they, will, they will have loyalty issues because no matter how much you dislike your, your ex-partner, it's still your child's parent, and that doesn't change for the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, so that's the first thing. And uh, the second thing is really... The, uh, whatever you teach in your context and whatever your, your, uh, your, your partner does with the child, uh, know that the child is able to differentiate. Okay, so as long as we do our work, we provide a safety, we provide uh, that, that space for a child to be connected, to be late, to, to feel safe with us, there is no worry about whatever the child receives on the other side. Yes. Okay, if, if the child goes there and he's well loved, you know, celebrate because there is more people loving him and just going to make mm. him a better person. Exactly. Right? But if your child goes there and he doesn't feel the support, he gets spoiled, he gets a lot of freedom, he will know when he comes back, limits and safety is the place for him or her. Mm. Mm. Okay, so you just need to take care of your side and then. Um, and then and, and do the best you can with the child and support support your child when your child goes over to, to uh, the other parent. Unless the child comes back and complains, then it's a different story, right? Mm. If, if the child is not getting proper care, then definitely we need to step into it, mm. right? Uh, but in general, um, you know, whatever the child does and enjoys on the, on, on the other side, you know, be happy with the child. Sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, it, it seems like you're happier there. Uh, well, sometimes they go over on the weekend, of course, happier than lah. You know, come back Monday. No school. And Friday, like, exactly. I was like, you know, um, yeah. So, so have confidence in what we are doing with our child mm -hmm. and do the best with, with the space given to us. Mm -hmm. And then whatever happens on the other side, try to come from a supportive space. Yes. And how can you support your child to be best also when he's, he or she is there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, no straight answers because it's so many factors. Uh, but that's involved. so practical. Yeah, what you yeah, just said. Yeah, so many yeah. factors. Yeah. I think the yeah, most but... important thing is uh, safety, security. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. from your, your side as a household. And I think it's not yeah. just, this should not just be applied for co-parenting. It's just, it's just a whole thing of creating that safe space for the child that they know that they can come yeah. home and be loved and they yes. can share anything. Yes. You know, because yes. when they go out to the world, whether they're going to school, mm. going to grandparents' home, I don't know, going yeah. to enrichment, whatever. It's, it's also, a, you know, they, they will be treated in a, in a different environment. Yes, um, yes. You know, yeah. and when they come back, as long as they have a safe space, that's where they're growing and learning and yes. developing. So, yeah. yeah really, and really yeah, resonate with what you yeah. say. Yeah, and, and sometimes home is the only place they can let their guard down. Yes. So that, sometimes that's, that's why we get the worst sides of them. <laughs> yes. because, because, because they have to be a certain way you know they have to put up like they have to meet expectations everywhere they go but when they come home it's like can I just be myself <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and so when they, when, they, when they feel safe enough for them to you know have a little bit of tantrum uh, you know, you know, a, a little bit disrespectful every now and then not all the time you know still have to have proper boundaries um, you know, I, I think also we want to also see that as, as we're providing them a safe enough space uh, for them to be able to just 
chill a little bit. Mm. You know, uh, yeah. yeah, especially for teenagers. Oh, especially yeah. for teenagers. Ah. Yeah, yeah. It's a they, big, big they whole new topic altogether. <laughs> teenagers. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so teenagers, you you need to cut them a lot of slacks when they when they're moody. Mm. Yeah, and yes. to know that it is not personal, it it is not directing at us. Yes, and sometimes it is because you are safe, and they they are able to, you know, uh, to to let that side out, and and we want to be able to support that because then again it's a now whole new topic lah in terms of the emotional quotient, emotional intelligence, mm. right? Um, yeah, from from that space, then yeah, how do we support them when they're in that emotional state? Yeah. Mm. Wow, mm. I really enjoyed your sharing. Uh, one pin saying, I, I used to be such a control freak, but I'm really happy to delegate to my hubby. Smart one, yes. I think we just need Yay! to delegate. <laughs> well, they can do it. After you that, de- yes, and make sure that you affirm them, you know. Oh, honey, such a good job, well done. And then they will keep doing it. Lah. Yeah, it's <laughs> really true. I mean, um, yes, yes. This, uh, you know, circuit breaker period, I've found that since my husband is home more, I'm giving him yeah. more things to do, you know, with the yeah. kids and for the kids. And yeah, actually yeah. he can do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he just said yes. he never, you know, had a chance to do it because he was always yes. over. So, and I think he's yeah. enjoying it too. And the relationship is better, right? Yes, it. I think we really underestimate them. Mm, sometimes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, one last question for you. Um, our group is about hearty mums. And uh, mm-hmm. to me, a hearty mom is really about, you know, a mom who is happy, fulfilled, and therefore able to nurture happy kids as well. So I'd like mm-hmm. to know, you know, what do you think is a hearty mom in, in, in your definition? A hearty mom, uh, wow. To, to me, I think for, for myself, I'm, I'm first of all, uh, I'm first of all who I am as as a woman right um who i am as a woman as a person um when i'm grounded when i'm sure of uh, myself when i take care of myself when i know what i want what's important to me what my values are uh, when i'm connected to things that's important to me uh, then i give from that space I, then I give from that space of growth and give from that space of fullness mm. where when I give, I don't expect the return because I, don't, I give not expecting that you need to compensate mm. uh, or that you need to, because I do this for you, then therefore you need to do this and that, mm. right? Um, so so my, my, uh, I'm always there, like I, I'm passionate about helping parents to help their kids to be the best versions of themselves. Right. And the only way I can release my kids to be the best versions of themselves is when I don't have strings attached to them, that mm. they need to be a certain way in order for me to look good. Yeah. Right. I'm fine by myself. So, mm. so yeah. So I basically, I, I, I just need to be good. So um, do I have to learn parenting styles? Yeah. Every single day I still have to learn. I'm continuously learning and growing. Um, so it's a journey. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think Hati Mom to me, at the end of the day is be the, be the best version of myself because yes. that's what I Wonderful. want for my kids. Mm, yeah. Yes. And then yeah. you can model it to them when you're the best version yeah. of yourself. Yeah. I'm not perfect. I'm just yes. best versions of myself at this point in my life. Mm, right? Yes. I'm still evolving. I'm still evolving. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Awesome. Yay. That's thanks. a good question. I haven't, I haven't quite thought about it. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's a good question. That, yeah. yeah. But that's so important. Yeah. What is, okay, one more question for you. What is one thing <laughs> that you do to, that makes you happy? One thing I do that makes me happy, there mm. are a lot of things that make me happy. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm quite easily satisfied. Um, one thing that makes me happy, I, I could literally just go down to Starbucks, like I've got a Starbucks downstairs. Uh, oh, it's I downstairs? There. Oh wow, it's so convenient. It's, 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 it's like, yeah, it's less than a five minute walk. It's, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really near Junction 8, I'm in Dishan. So, I, I'm I'm perfectly happy if I just have like a book or something I listen to. I can sit there uh, and just do that for the whole morning with a cup of coffee. I I can't I can't be happy. Mm. Yeah, it's a very, very simple thing. So, yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so tons tons of things. But the 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 joy really comes with um 
we seen the kids grow. Uh, that that that's the joy. That that kind of sure. joy. Uh, and then definitely faith. Right, faith is a big part of uh of who I am. So mm. so being in that space and growing spiritually. Wow. Yeah. And so, also la mas masay la masay la. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh the being connected with husband is a very precious moment. Yeah. Because husband is not always very emotionally connected. <laughs> So that's uh, that's always work in progress, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just want to quickly share. Uh, I know wow, our time is up. Um, you know the sure. thing that I was I was sharing with you about couples conversation, right? So so one of the ways that we have uh, found over these past twenty years of working with couples is, um, is to to not to not just work with couples when they have conflict, but to actually build intimacy. Mm, right. Okay. So so build. So we call it couple conversation. So building intimacy is really a space where we have a safe structure where we can we can really talk to each other and make sure that we are heard, understood, and uh, and to build that connection. Okay. Right. And it, yeah. And it's it's very simple, but yeah, it's very powerful. Uh, so so that's one thing that I think uh, for couples who are looking at growing their their relationship. Uh, to just have conversations with each other where you really be there and listen to each other mm. uh, with the intention of understanding the other person. Yes. Yes. Right? Uh, just, I, I think in, in our terms, what we call being fully present, right? Mm. Being yes. fully and listening. And, and it's hard because you have a lot of buttons for your partner to push and you are pushing a lot of the buttons. <laughs> Yes. So, so, yeah, so, so the couple conversation we provide is really just a, a structured, safe space for couples to talk to us uh, just for an hour every week or every other week. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah. So, they actually so, speak so with, the, with uh, the presence of uh, a facilitator. Yes, oh. yes. And, wow. and, and the beautiful thing is after like two, three, or some, some couples take longer, about four sessions, they, they start to modulate themselves. Okay. Because every time, yeah, every time they, 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 they say something that's, that's not within the structure, we will call them out on it, right? Mm. And then so, so as they do more, they, they feel safer and safer. So more and more things come out as, as they share. And okay. then they will call each other, hey, you forgot to do that. Oh, you forgot to do that. It's like, so after mm. all, we'll just sit there and listen. Like, <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, this yeah. sounds really meaningful. Wow. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of great mm. tips from you. So if, if um, you yeah. know, if the... the um, if our members are watching this replay or right now mm-hmm. here, how can they connect with you? Um, I think you yeah. have a, you you do have a, a little was it ebook or something that you have uh, that you can yes, you I, have for I, the group. Can you talk a little yes, bit? Yes, I do. And this is actually I, I just completed it yesterday. Uh, wow, so fresh this, from the other. The first yeah, no, 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 <laughs> this is just the first. Okay, yeah. So I will I will drop the link in. Uh, oh, can I drop the link in now? Uh, oh, okay, okay. Maybe can I? Can. Or we can do it later as well. Maybe... Okay, we'll do it later. Yeah, yeah. let's forget. Yeah, yeah. Well, once, once. Yeah, it, it, it's just a, a a few quick tips where where I talk about how to how to get your kids to listen without yelling. Oh, right. big um, topic. Yeah, so, <laughs> favorite so, topic. Yeah, so yeah, and and, and I, I just want to share a little bit about you know sometimes we we're so busy managing the behaviors we forget that there are actually a lot of needs behind, and every every behavior has a reason. Right, so mm-hmm. so I talk a little bit about not just managing the behavior. Uh, what are some of the reasons that we can look at? Uh, because very often when you begin to meet the need, you find that the behavior actually takes care of itself. It's it's pretty yeah. interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I do agree with that as well. Yeah. 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 A lot okay, of unmet easy. needs will lead to yeah, hard, big emotions. Yeah. Not for just for yes. the child, but and for it, the parent as well. Oh yeah, tell us about it, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and, and then just a, a few quick tips. Uh, how to manage your behavior when it does happen? Okay, mm. yeah. So so um, I, I'm just giving it the first first month. Uh, it's going to be free. Um, so the link uh, that I'll be providing uh, later is is going to be just access it, click into it, uh, so you can access the material for free. Uh, but that will be uh, just during the launch period. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll check out that in the link. Check that out in the mm-hmm. link. Yeah, Great. check it out later. <laughs> we'll find out Looking what you forward to that. <laughs> okay. Great, thank you. So yeah. thank you, Cheesier, for all your sharing today. And uh, thank, thank you, you all, all those of you who are listening in and watching the replay. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next Hachi Chats. All right. Okay, bye see for now. Hachi Moms. Hachi Moms. Bye. 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 Bye.